Can you guys see the whiteboard? Okay. So this is going to be a generic layout of a fence. You got three lines of fence. That's all you're seeing there. There's no gates. There's no house. There's nothing. It's just boom, boom. Just talking about the layout of a backyard fence. <coughs> How many people here write their contracts up, measure jobs in feet, quantify it in feet? Be honest. Okay. All right. You just changed it? <laughs> okay. Because of this conversation? Okay. All right. So I don't know why Granddad did that in the very beginning, but that's how it was started, was everything was measured in footage. And uh, that data, um, I believe, is inconsistent and it is a uh, not accurate way of measuring um, the results in your company. What I'm talking about is if we need to figure out how efficient your company is or where your weak spots are or are not in your company, figure out what strengths and weaknesses are, we need to have a common denominator. Like with any mathematical equation, you have to get to a common denominator before you can compare two things together. That's what we do. We add, multiply fractions, we get the things that are common denominator first. Well, common denominator in your company, we've got to find the most consistent common denominator across all anomalies and types of jobs. Right, because chain link is different than wood, is different than vinyl, is different than uh, aluminum. Grades and changes and all that stuff is different. Section length, all that stuff is different. If we use footage as a common denominator, I think you're going to get inconsistent data by at least 10%. So if it's by 10%, I find the data, and I'm going to show you how I believe it's 10%, uh, at least 10% inaccurate, potentially could be twice that. Uh, by measuring in feet, okay? If we were to look at a project, what's the hardest part of the job, any job, any job we build, all fences, the hardest part of the equation is dealing with the demons in the ground. So it's digging the holes or driving the post. It's setting the post. It's the structure of the fence. I don't know of a fence style, besides for temp fence, that you build without putting post in the ground. We do it every time, okay? They all require a post of some sort, except for this one design I have in my head I've never built yet, but if we were to build, I, can, I got an idea to build fence with no post. Yeah, if you wave the fence in and out, we have strength and no post. Like, I love that idea, but I haven't built one yet. Everyone has a post, and that is where the anomalies are, the demons are, and all the, all the inconsistencies are, is digging the holes or driving the post. And that is either on like a six foot center, or an eight foot center, 10 foot loads, ten, chain link is 10 foot centers, farm fences, 20 foot centers. So we have posts on different incremental lengths of fence. So if we compare aluminum fence to vinyl fence to wood fence, we say 100 foot of aluminum fence compared to 100 foot of vinyl fence compared to 100 foot of chain link fence, totally different worlds, are they not? You've, with the chain link fence, you have 10 posts. With the aluminum fence, on six foot centers, how many? 16 posts. If you want math right, that's like 60% more posts, it's even more than that, I guess 16, six to 16. That's a lot of extra posts. And that's the anomaly and that's the majority of the work is digging the holes and setting the posts. Because once that's done, vinyl snaps right together, aluminum's already installed, chain link fabric goes up pretty quick. It, really, that's the nuts of what we're doing, guys. We don't build fence, we set posts. And on the, we have a side of building fence. Primarily, we set posts. Driven, wet, concrete, whatever, dry pack. That's our number one job we do is set posts. So in this scenario, and somebody will probably help me with the calculator here, we got to have a post at the ends and in the corner. We agree on that. And that for example purposes, so we're on the same page. We're going to build this fence as an, a wood fence. And we're going to agree that ASTM standard says we're not going to go over eight foot sections with a two by four rail. So we're going to maximize this at eight foot on centers. So we're building, okay? So add this up for me. Somebody please give me a total footage. This is different than my example I've used before. I heard three numbers. 227, we agree? 227 feet of fence. That's how many feet of fence it is, all right? I have to put a post at every eight feet, right? 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, 56, 64, 72. Oh shit, fence is 73 foot long. I need one more. Right? Happens all the time. 
Happens all the time. 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, 56, 64, 72, boom. The back line is 81 feet, no gates, we're keeping it simple. All right, so 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, 56, 64, 72, 80, 81. I get it right? 11. Yeah. So I'm putting them there, I want you to see the marks. I want you to see every one of those is the, is the work of the job. We're gonna dig a hole every one of those, okay? How many sections is it? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, well, that's 11, and uh, 10 and 10, 31, right? We all agree it's 31 sections of fence. How many feet can you build with 31 sections of fence? A foot. 200 and what? 248 feet of fence is what you paid for when you bought 31 sections of fence, right guys? Did you buy a post at every one of those holes? You bought two by fours for every rail? You might have bought concrete for every one of them? You might have bought a few less pickets? Okay, all right, all right. But the bulk of the work is not the pickets, right? Framing, the rails, the posts. You purchased 248 feet of fence. You did. You charged Mrs. Jones whatever per foot. Let's call it a, what's an easy number to do math? Ten, $10 a foot. So you charge her $10 a foot. 227, that's 2,000. So 21 feet less, okay? Times whatever cost it would be per foot, right? Which is, let's say $10 a foot. So that's $210 less money, right? Would we right? If the original contract price was $2,270, what percentage is $210 that you left off the, off the 10%. huh? 10%. 10%. You literally gave the homeowner 10% discount. Huh? So I'm going I'm to cover that. I find that in our industry, looking at a lot of people's companies, I can tell you that I find that a successful fence business makes 10% net profit, true profit, on average. Some are 15, but most are in the two to 3% range, okay? That are still trying to figure it out. But 10% is respectable, all right? 10% is. Most of the people in the owner-operator world that are making one to two to 3% is because they're giving up 10% on every damn job they do. 100% of your profit went to Mrs. Jones because you measure because granddad told you to measure by Feet. Now this is an extreme example because you have 73 feet, 73 feet, 81 feet. If this would have been 80 feet, 72 feet, and 72 feet, it wouldn't be 10% difference. Okay? So not every job are you losing 10%. But anytime you have these anomalies where you go over that footage, you are losing 10%. That's not the end of the story. That is not at all the end of the story. That is just the beginning. You're leaving money on the table. All right? We'll just put that nugget aside. If we're going to measure data, quantifiable data for our teams, Josh is building fence and Cannon's building fence and Mike's building fence on my teams. That's my three teams. And you put in uh, 227 feet for the week and you put in 248 feet a week for, for the week. You did 227 feet and you did a 248 foot job. All right, and we give kudos to you Cannon, you killed it, bud. You beat him by 10%. You get the bonuses. Good job. Uh, how many sections did you put in, Cannon? 31. How many sections did you put in, Josh? 31. Oh, so you both did the same exact amount of work. So productivity was almost identical between the teams. You get that, you get that, that point? So the, what I need you to, if we're going to start judging crews, which is what we'll show the job analysis later, we literally stack crews against crews and look down to the sections per man hour, per, per crew, per type of fence. Literally, like Josh's crew on vinyl fence operates at a 0.73 sections per man hour, and Cannon's crew operates at a 0.75 sections per man hour. And Colin's crew is at a 0.95. Holy crap. What's Colin doing that these two are not, so we can train these guys to do what Colin's doing, because it can be done with our equipment and our jobs that are sold, our way, it obviously can be done. Now we can learn and get our crews up. But if we don't have a common denominator, if we're using footage, follow me, if we're using footage, 
there's the, the whole comparison between teams is, is, is skewed big time, okay? You could be talking about 10, I don't know, 50,000 feet of fence in a year. 50,000 feet of fence in a year. That number can really get skewed when the footage goes up, okay? Quantifiable data by sections brings it way down. And you'll see uh, uh, for our crews, I think they were around we're gonna, 3,000 sections. You're leaving money on the table. I'm telling you guys, I've never found a fence business, I haven't yet, that went out of business because they charged too much. <laughs> We're all scared of it. Oh, I'll lose all the work if I change my price. Yeah, right. I know tons of people that raise their price, they get more work. How does that happen? Right? I remember I was in an AFA class when I was like maybe younger 20s. I wish I knew the instructor's name because he got that point across. He got in front of everybody up there. He said, raise your damn gum prices, is what he kept screaming to everybody. I'm like, what's this guy? I'm with an accent to him and everything. Dad gum prices. I'm like, wow, this guy's really passionate about this. But he kept talking about it. He also talked about the egg sucking dog, Tony. If you know who that was, remember the egg sucking dog guy? I'd be great to remember that guy. But <laughs> egg sucking dog. And, and that's a true story. But I got to get back. I'm getting off track. All right. So the other thing I want you to think about. Okay, so if we agree we can track data better, all right, okay, we can track data with the crews. Now, customers, oh my goodness, how many times have you had a customer go out there after you built the fence and measure it and say, you owe me three feet, it's only 225 feet of fence, the contract says 227. I'm like, are you serious you took a tape measure on the yard? Yep, I want a discount. Oh my God, I already didn't charge you for the 248 I put in and now you want more money off? And then some guys will give it to them. Some guys will give it to them, okay? They won't call you when it's over and say, hey, you put in 250 feet, I owe you some money. That won't happen, all right? So there's that communication piece with the homeowner. If your contracts say 31 sections, they can walk in their backyard and go, one, two, three. And if it's off a foot, who cares? If it's a foot this way, a foot that way, I don't give a shit. Communication is clear at that point. Contract says two gates, 31 sections. Go count them. The other thing that's really cool is before you sell the job, they call you. Hey, how much is fence? I don't know. How much will it cost to fence in my yard? Well, I, mean, I don't know. How much does a vehicle cost? I get frustrated when people call me and ask that. But I can say this. Can you walk in your backyard? Yep. Count the number of sections on your fence. Oh, I have 17. Oh, cool. So you got 17 sections times two gates. I don't have to see it. I've already, you already get, you're, I don't have to measure it. That's how they can measure their fence for you. Tell me the number of sections. Tell me the type of fence it is. We at least now are in the ballpark, all right? People come into my office and they're like, well, I don't want to do the, you know, my salesman tool is fantastic, but some people just do not want to get online and measure that. Or there's trees in the way or whatever. I'm like, cool, no problem. Just count them. And then we have a number, right? So communication with the customer is better. Documents all the way through. So our teams, only communicate by sections. They'll come back like, we got 25 sections done today, we got 30 sections. They're never talking about footage. We got rid of that in our, our whole company. There is no footage discussion at all. Like, we got rid of it. You can do it. You can talk, stop talking about it. Um, the next piece, this is really cool. This is how you get another 10% closer to your competition. I just said earlier, raise your dog, daggone prices, right? Truth be told, like, you are always better off charging more than charging less, okay? Like, the race to the bottom, you hear people say it all the time, deductions, discounts, it never, you're never going to win. And I'll show you a calculation on that later about how far, how much more revenue you got to do for a 10% discount, no discounts. But here's the trick. If your company structure and your overhead and your business and, and the branding and the super fencer trucks you got running around and all this stuff costs money, so you're like, Sean, I'm already 10% higher than my competition. On average, I am already 10% higher than my competition. Cool. Let's bridge the gap by talking about sections. So here, follow me through with this. I'm at Mrs. Jones' house. I know I'm about 10% higher than everybody else. I'm cool with that, okay? I do not discount. How do I get more margins, higher margins, 
and get closer to my competition. Not get a discount. How do I get my price closer to my competition is 10% lower. So when I'm, here's the difference. Some contractors go to the Mrs. Jones, they talk at the back door, and she says, well, I want to go around the yard like this and come over from that tree here, and she stands on the back porch. See it happen all the time. And then the guy rolls the wheel out, goes around the yard, measures everything, writes some piece of paper, figures it up and gives it to her. And this is what he gets because he went to the tree or to the marker or whatever's on the ground, the property pin, whatever it was. He didn't engage the customer in the conversation. I tell Mrs. Jones, let's, let's go take a look at it. Come with me. And I make him walk with me as the ticker goes off. And we get to that line. So I walk out 73 feet. And she's like, I want to go right here. I like to line up that peach tree over there. It's really, I just think I should go here. And I roll it out, 73 feet. The next words in my mouth are, well, Mrs. Jones, you know, at these sections are max length, eight foot. It's the most bang for your buck. If we back this off to 72 feet, you get the best value out of your project. Homers don't want the cheapest price. Secret, gold nugget, they want the best value. Hands down, 100%. It is not the cheapest price. I can prove it to you over and over. They want the best value. We all do. You go to Sam's Club and Costco and you look at the shrimp there and you're like, Oh, that's uh, 0.26 cents per ounce, and that's 25 cents. You don't care if your bag costs you twice as much. You're going to buy the bag that's cheapest per shrimp. It's best value. We all do it, okay? So I tell Mrs. Jones, well, you know, if you back off the 72 feet, uh, I'm, these sections that you're looking for, they're, uh, this wood fence is $250 a section. But if you back off one foot, I'm going to save you $250 right here. And if we do it over there, I'm going to save you 500 Oh, yeah, you bring it on back. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine with me. Think my competition did that? Hell no, they didn't do that. I go to the back line, and it's, let's just say in this case, it's like 81 feet, or, the, or I do this, it's 85 feet, and there's a gate in there. Immediately, I'm like, well, I know you got property lines on both sides. If we change that gate to a five foot gate, you get your best value on the sections in the back, because there'll be all full sections. And what's really cool is they'll be uniform. So everything's full sections around the yard, it's all matched and nice and even. You won't have a chopped up section like people put in and they're thinking, man, this guy knows his game. I want this guy, right? Not the other guy with a little chopped up section. And, they just, and you teach them that they don't want that. Like you don't really want eight, eight, eight. And some people make you know, five, six, four at the end, they'll blend it. But what I can do for you is it'll all be nice and even all around your yard. Does that sound like a good idea to you? I said, now the, the five foot gates would have cost you an extra uh, 50 bucks but it'll save you a $250 section over going to the four foot gate and having a one foot piece you gotta make up. And they're gonna be like, yeah. I also proved to that customer that I'm invested in saving them money. I'm invested in making sure they get the best value. I'm giving them the time, I'm gonna get that sale. I'm gonna get that sale because I'm the only contractor that talked them through it and paid attention to their money. Not, uh, well, you know, the cheapest fence I have is chain link. No, let's not stop, have that conversation. Let's have the conversation of how to get the best fence in your budget. Let's have that conversation. Let's, what's the best product I can get in your yard so you have less maintenance or less worries and down the road longevity and value is what we're driving for, right? So if I do that, if I save three sections on this job and each section, let's say uh, we, gotta use, we gotta use data here. So we were using $10 a foot earlier. So $10 a foot is $80 a section. All right. So in this scenario, we were using $10 a foot. If I save three sections, that's 24 feet times 10 is 240 bucks. $240 is what percentage of $2,270 that we started at? 11%. Holy crap. You mean to tell me, I just showed you 10% of the front you were leaving on the table you collected, and I just showed you I saved another 11% and bridge the gap? Screw feet. Why are we dealing with feet? Okay? Stop it. Stop giving the homeowner the, the, the advantage of the feet and eating it up. That's your profits. Your profits are 100% going out the tubes first. They are. That's where it cuts first. It cuts deepest is in the profits. We got to stop talking about feet. And I know that's against the industry standard, against everything we know, and every software designer out there, like I had to fight through, like we're not doing this in feet, I can tell you right now. Not happening. Give me data in sections. Suppliers do it, everyone does it. But then suppliers on the invoice charge you by the section. <laughs> right? <laughs> so 
we kind of went backwards, right? We went from sections to feet, and now we got to go back to sections. Um, See, I'm saying, Tony, like we know this. We literally converted sections into feet because somebody along the line, and I think, I, I think it's farm fence. I really do, because farm fence is a little different, right? We started in the fence world started cattle, right? We had to keep cattle off. So if it started in that world, yes, they were rolling out 300 foot, 330 foot lines of a T post. The posts weren't the hardest part. See what I'm saying? So that goes back to the saying that I have that kind of ruffled some feathers. We gotta stop building a fence like granddad and start building a fence like our kids in the future. It's a great example of what I'm trying to say when I say that. No disrespect to granddad or my dad, but listen, they had different resources, they had different objections, objectives, they had different expectations. They were trying to keep cattle out and they were dealing with 500 foot uh, rolls of fabric and oil pipe every 20, 30 foot. It's a different world. He's right. That extra material in the roll, they could reuse that and weave it to the next one. We don't use the two by four one foot chunk. We don't use the vinyl leftover piece and we don't use the one foot piece of aluminum left over. So our world has changed and we are stubborn enough to be like, well, no, but we, we got to do it. We got to measure by foot. That's what I was taught. That's what Lowe says. That's what Home Depot says. Go to every one of them and get a quote from them. It's going to be five a foot. I promise. Here's another thing, key, key nugget. You can charge more. You can be more successful if you figure out how to be different. Notice what I used there, the word different. I did not say the best. I believe if you're in your community and you constantly advertise, we're number one, we're the best, hire us. No, to what perspective? To what, what scale? Like the homeowner is listening to you say that in whose eyes are you number one? In my eyes as Mr. Homeowner, I'm looking for a great value fence that's six foot tall wood, keep my dog in. You're the best at what, right? You're wasting advertising and branding space to even put it out there. Like, stop it. Stop putting that out there. But talk about what is quantifiable to them, right? Be different. And so how different is it if you're the only contractor to show up and talk about sections and your contracts in sections and everybody else is in feet. They're gonna ask you, well, oh, how much per foot is that? I'm glad you asked. It's actually 248 feet worth of fence. Divide that by this total. Look what I just did. Your $2,270 fence is actually 248 feet worth of fence that we're installing for you. Your per foot price goes down. Because the competition's using 227 for $2,270, $10 a foot. But you teach them, well, I'm actually going to have to use 248 feet of fence here, so cost per foot changes. Okay? You wouldn't believe the number of people that won't get the math. Oh my God. The bottom of the contract says, mine says $2,290, and yours says $2,270, and then you got $10 a foot. They are literally trying to figure out how much per foot we are, rather than the bottom number, which is the value, right? So don't engage with them in doing that foot is exchange and be different. Get rid of them comparing per foot price. So you might be 10, you're at 10, 50, 11, right? So be different and stop communicating with them in foot price. Be the guy that educates them and communicate in perception. The other key thing here, don't forget about this. If I change this to 72 feet and 72 feet and 80 feet, because I talked to Mrs. Jones and she agreed to let me do that, I can't believe I forget this step. This is huge. If she let me do that, how much labor did I save? Okay, hold on. I made them equal, so they're beautiful and even spaces, right? Do I have to customize and cut three sections on the end of every line? Do I have to even think about it, do the math, and, or have a chance of miscutting the rail and being too short? So, how much time? If I just come in full sessions? Yeah, it's really huge in the local file. I mean, it would, sure. It's, you can, You're cutting everyone, anyways, but yeah. yeah but for me, I hate seeing them. But you know someone's a rookie when you see the short section. Yeah. And, uh, but you're yeah. saving. So, let's just say you save 2% there. I don't know. Is that practical? Yeah. 1 or 2%, 10%. All these little. It's a 
great opportunity to use it. All these little pennies that we're saving add up, get together, make babies. And those babies grow to be dollars. Grow to be dollars, right? So we got 2% here, 10% here. 